Um, these are the numbers for that same modeling. Um, the estimate is that cost $21.55 for the extra things that you have to do. Um, and I know there's dispute over this. It's hard to do an exact number, in part because it's hard to know exactly how to calculate what the cost is of putting in the insulation and doing the air sealing correctly rather than not doing it correctly. Exactly how much extra time is that taking you to do? Um, all right, the first rater, we assume $900 um, for that as an addition above the $2,155. So the total extra cost was a little over $3,000. But they could get back $1,300 from the electric utility. So $1,755 was the net cost added to the building. You then assume a mortgage interest rate of 30 years, of 6% on a 30 year mortgage, and that turns it into 127 a year on the homeowner's mortgage, All right? But then we're figuring that this saves you a little over $500 a year on your utility bills. So the net savings to the homeowner is almost $400 a year beginning the first year that they've got the house. Um, and that's why we're doing it in large part, and that's the requirement, the Board of Building Regulation and Standards in its charter, it won't mandate things unless they think they're cost effective for the whole thing. Um, well, just so many questions, numbers. For, a, for rehab, it's trickier to do the numbers. Um, if you're doing a partial rehab, we think there's very little difference in cost. Um, and we didn't even really do those calculations because we're just saying you've got to put insulation in the walls, you've got to do an energy star window rather than a slightly worse than energy star double pane window. So we don't have calculations on that. What we did was for our calculations on a gut rehab. Um, but if you're doing a gut rehab, under the building code, you have to do almost everything anyway. You have to do full insulation and air sealing, and we're assuming you're doing gut rehab, so you're going to put in a new heating system anyway. So the way the modeling was, we did it, and I'm not sure this was the best idea, most of the cost was assumed what you would do anyway. And there was very little difference between a normal gut rehab and a gut rehab done to the stretch code level. Um, so it was only a little bit more cost, and therefore it was only a little bit of savings. Um, so you'll see that, and it just doesn't look like a whole lot of difference. Um, so this is a gut rehab of a triple decker. Um, this was actually done on a building picked out by the city of Cambridge, where they have a lot of them, and they wanted an example of this. Um, so this is what we're assuming you would do anyway to meet the base code if you were gut rehab that you would um, condition the basement and insulate the basement with insulate the foundation walls, insulate the above grade walls to R13, which is what will fit in the cavity, um, insulate the ceiling. Um, we're actually assuming only an 80% efficient heating system, water heating slightly worse than we assumed before. Infiltration, we're assuming this is not very great air sealing, um, and 50% light. Um, and the differences with the stretch code, as you can see, we already did that will get you to an 86 hertz rating. And the stretch code actually only will get you one more point because you're not doing very much different. Um, in this case, we're assuming you only did a little bit of attempts to air seal better. So you get a slightly better infiltration rating. You put in a higher percentage of efficient lighting and you put in that bathroom. I don't think that actually gets you any points for the bathroom fan because it's not actually saving you energy. Um, so what happens is um, it only costs a little bit of extra money, you only save a little bit of energy, and you just have a marginally uh, marginal savings to the home. Now, you could go a little farther. You're not required to, but you could try to seal up this house better. Um, make it a tighter house, put more effort into the air sealing, and it would save you more money. 
um, cost you more and save you more, and we have an example of that. Um, so this is a gut rehab where you do better air sealing, but then because you've done better air sealing, you've made the house tighter, you also need better ventilation, so you put in an energy recovery ventilation system, which costs a lot more. Um, so here, what we've done is we reduce the infiltration to four air changes per hour, um, and put in the energy recovery ventilation system. The improvement costs are a lot higher. Um, we figured the annual energy savings, though, are also a lot higher because you cut the leakage, and you still get a fairly small savings. So for gut rehab, we actually think most of the savings is what the base code is going to require. Anyway. Any questions on all that? Yeah. Is that based on like all electric versus propane versus natural gas? Uh, I, think I think this is assuming natural gas. The so natural gas system. And the environment is based on Salem or? or well, it's not the environment if you're like Alaska. It's gonna oh, no. It's, it's definitely Massachusetts conditions. I, it's the Boston area. Massachusetts actually does have three different climate zones in the federal um, energy star system. Um, so this was done for the Boston metro area climate zone. Anything else? Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about the commercial stretch code. Does anybody here do commercial buildings? Okay, so renovations, commercial buildings are not covered. Anybody here done a new commercial building? So new commercial buildings are mostly covered, um, but we'll just gonna cover really quickly. Starting at the top, um, as was said earlier, Paul, um, renovations are exempt. If it's under 5,000 square feet, it's exempt. And specialty buildings are exempt if they're um, under, uh, under 30, sorry, it's not on this slide. 5,000. Under 40,000 square feet. Um, if there are uh, warehouses, um, supermarkets, or labs, and they're under 40,000, they're exempt. So what's covered is generalized commercial above 5,000 and specialty buildings above 40,000. New long, new construction only. Um, so there's two categories of those really big ones, over 100,000 square feet, and moderate sized ones. 5,000 and 100,000, right? If you're doing something really big, I doubt that anybody in this room, right? Nobody here, nobody, doesn't look to me like anybody here is doing 100,000 square foot buildings. Um, if you were doing that, um, you have to do custom energy modeling for the building and you have to come in 20% below ASHRAE 90.1. Um, if it's under 100,000 square feet, you have a choice. You can either do modeling and come in 20% below, or you can do the prescriptive path and you do a set of specific things which um, have been created by an organization called the New Buildings Institute um, working with the electric utilities. And there's a design manual for the New Buildings Institute that Engrid will give you, right? It's Engrid here in Salem. Um, They'll give you a copy of this manual and it tells you exactly what specific things you have to do to, um, to meet these prescriptive requirements. Um, just one example of it. This was one example that Ingrid funded. It's at Lemonster. It's a Fidelity Bank branch. Built new, um, say, uh, I think it was this 40,007 square foot building. Um, and these were the cost-benefit calculations on it. Um, they estimated about $100,000 extra cost to do the upgrades to meet the stretch code. Well, it actually wasn't for the stretch code, it was for National Grid's um, only program that they subsidized before the stretch code existed, but it's essentially the same as the stretch code. It's for the NBI requirements. At estimated about $27,000, in annual savings. Engrid, however, will pay back pay the commercial building constructor or owner two-thirds, about two-thirds of the cost. 
right, is their incentive. So the net cost to the owner was about $34,000. Um, and the payback, given that you're saving $27,000, was only a little over one year. 